Hey everybody, alright, I'm back. Um, so we're going to go back right into this. Um, now really quickly, what I want you guys to do is, you can see right here on the right side, in the Assets folder, what, you, what I want you to do is I want you to create a new folder. So if you right click on it, you go to New, and then just go to Folder and type in, um, for the folder name, type in GFX for Graphics. Um, the reason I already did it was because I had to create the buttons. Um, so I have two buttons here, I have a Play button, and I have an Exit button. Um, so you guys can make the buttons, um, it's really easy, I just made it in, um, I made it in, uh, fireworks so it's pretty simple um, or you can just make it in paint I mean, whatever you want to do it's just like a little black box I don't even care um, just make just make some type of button um, for me mine was um, 400 by 100 pixels um, so you can make yours that big that'll be good um, but getting into this before we actually create the resources we're going to start working on, on scenes um, so the way that, that uh, the image runs is off of scenes um, so they pretty much are different screens you're going to go to like there's a game screen or a game scene an option scene, menu scene, etc, etc. Um, so first we're going to create a new package to keep this, keep this all organized. So we're going to um, click on that and click this little button up here for the package and just do uh, dot scenes or just do dot scene. That'll work. Um, now click a new, create a new class and we're going to name it base scene um, and just click OK. And we're going to do extends scene. So it's extending the scene class already. Um, so we're pretty much going to put our own little wrapper around this. Uh, okay, come on now. All right, save. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a few variables first off. Um, so instead of having to pass through the, uh, for example, the resource manager or the vertex buffer object manager, it's a better example, or the camera, um, we're just going to create function or variables for them. So we're going to create a few protected variables so we can pass them down. So we're going to do uh, protected engine engine so they have access to the engine protected uh, vertex buffer object manager go with capital M VBOM uh, protected uh, game activity we'll do that one next uh, and then activity and then just import all them if you hold down shift and O control shift and O will do it for you just import everything uh, so for the engine it's going to be org that and org that and engine that engine that engine import that and then the rest um, let's see uh, change, I spelled it wrong. And then game activity as well. Import that. Um, so import all of them. Uh, then finally what we're going to do is we're going to do protected camera. camera. So we need the camera as well. We're going to have to import that. That is also the camera one here. Um, after that we're going to create the constructor for it. So we're going to do public base scene. <coughs> and then we're just going to do uh, this dot engine equals uh, resource manager dot get instance dot engine. So we're actually just get all this information straight from the resource manager. So instead of having to get all of it or pass it through in the constructor, because we created the resource um, engine and we prepared it in the game activity, um, it already has all the things that we need. So we're just going to, instead of having to create more variables, we're just going to get it right from this. Um, so we're going to do resource manager, get that kind of get that engine. Uh, and then we're going to do this dot bbom equals resource manager dot get instance dot bbom. And then this dot game activity, uh, actually this dot uh, activity. I'm sorry, equals resource manager dot get instance dot activity, and then this dot camera equals resource manager dot get instance dot camera. All right, so we have all of those things. Um, so now we're going to create a few different uh, abstract. Uh, functions so we can pass them down to the classes that extend this class. So we're going to do public abstract void uh, create create with a cat with a lowercase c create scene. So when the scene's created this function is going to be called. We're going to do public abstract void. Um, we'll do on back pressed. So when the back key is pressed, oops, oops, end it. And then public abstract and then we're going to do uh, Void dispose scene, and then up here we're gonna have to go and make this abstract as well. Um, all right, so we're done with the base scene. Um, so now what we need to do is we make a scene manager. It's pretty much going to manage all the scenes, obviously. Um, so we're going to create a new class again. Uh, we're going to create the scene package one more time. So create a new class, name it scene manager. And inside of here, I mean, we're going to do the basic things. We're going to load all the different scenes. Um, we're going to create a few. All the scenes are going to be created in here. The reason that we're going to create them all in here, um, just like we have a resource manager, which is going to load all the pictures, instead of having to load them all on each scene, so like say, for example, when the scene's loaded, every single time it's it's like loaded, say you go to 
the menu scene, it's gonna load all the pictures. Say then you go to the game scene, it's gonna load the game it's gonna load all the game scene pictures. But then if say you go back, it's gonna load all those uh menu scene pictures again. So it's gonna reload them twice. So instead of having to do that, we're just gonna load them once in the resources. That's where we're creating a resource manager. So just like that, we're gonna create a scene manager. So all the scenes are gonna be stored in here as well. So we're gonna do um private base scene. And we're gonna do splash scene. Um actually we're actually not going to create a splash scene right now. We're going to do that later. We're going to do menu scene. We might do that at the end. Private base scene, uh, game scene, and that'll be it for now. Um, then we're going to do private static final uh, scene manager. An instance. So we're going to create another static instance of this scene manager. Just so that any. Um, any class can get this. We're going to do public static uh, scene manager uh, get instance and then we're just going to return instance with capitals. Alright, so then after that we're going to start creating um, a few different things. So the first thing we need is we're going to need a variable to keep track of the of the current scene that we're on. So we're going to do private um, base scene uh, current scene. So we're gonna get the current scene to whatever scene we're on right now. Then we're gonna do um, what else do we need? We're gonna need the uh, engine type. So we're gonna need private. We're gonna need the engine. Private engine engine equals resource manager get instance dot engine. And the reason we need this is so that we can actually switch the scenes because you'll see um, in a second. I actually demonstrate in a second. Um, that the engine uh, is what changes the scene, so it's going to display. You're going to be able to display what scene you want through this engine. Um, but then we're going to create a scene type. Um, it's pretty much going to be a little enum. So we're going to do public enum scene type. And this is going to be the type of scene that we're actually on. So it's pretty much going to hold what scene we're on, and using the scene, um, we'll load the appropriate scene. Um, so we're going to do. Uh, we have scene uh, menu. And well, not that scene game, and that'll be it. So we're gonna have those two scenes right now. So you want to add like an options one. You can do scene underscore options and add that in. And then up here you can also add these scene options. Um, uh, but then I'll sh I'll show you what I mean when we set the scene. Uh, I'll do that right now. So we're gonna do uh, public void set scene. Now we can either load it from the scene, so we can do uh, base scene scene. We want to do that if 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 we want to use that sometime. Um, then we're gonna do engine dot set scene. So like I said, we're gonna set the scenes. We're gonna do scene, and then we're gonna do current scene equals scene, and then um, yeah, that'll be it there. And then we're also gonna do public void set scene, and then this is we're gonna actually use a scene type to load it. So say you want say you're in the game and you don't have this, you don't have the base scene with you because it's a private one. You just want to make it the uh, you want to make it the say you're in the menu you want to make it the game. Then we'll just use a scene type. So we'll do scene type type, and then um, we'll just use a we'll use a switch or we we'll use a case. Um, we'll do scene. Or I'm sorry, type. And then we're gonna do case. Um, what is it? We'll do case scene menu first, and then we'll do. Uh, Turn or break to break, and then case scene game, and then break. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to see, oh crap, it's going to see um, what type they selected. So if they selected the scene type, a scene menu, or the scene game, what it's going to do is we are going to just set it to that scene. So we're going to do set scene menu scene. Now this variable is coming from right up here. We have our menu scene up here, so we know what they want to set. And then right here we're going to do set scene game scene boom now if you had an options one you just add it to the end there and that's pretty much how it would work um, and that's pretty much is going to be our our scene manager for right now um, after that we already have our uh, instance in here so we're just going to do uh, public scene or we're going to do basic base scene uh, get current scene so if we ever need to get that we might need to get that later um, then we'll do return uh, current scene. Now, where does this come into play? Where do we actually use this? So we're going to go back into the game activity, and now you'll see, um, you'll see right here we have the onCreateScene. 
Um, so pretty much what we're going to do is we are going to create a function to load our menu scene. Um, so we're going to do uh, actually let's um, let me think about this before we do that we might need to load the resources. So we're actually going to do the resources first. Um, go to your resource manager go to load menu resources and right now we're going to be loading all of our uh, graphics. Um, so we're going to first off we're going to create we're going to have to set the path that we are loading all of the uh, graphics from. So right now we already know that it's coming from this graphics uh, folder but the actual uh, the engine doesn't know that, so we're going to do this long word bitmap um, texture atlas texture region factory dot set asset base path and just going to do gfx so it loads straight from the um, straight from the um, uh, asset folder already, just going to gfx slash um, so it's going to load from that actual um, that actual folder um, then we're going to have to create something called a texture atlas. So what that does is it's pretty much a little atlas that stores all of your photos for or all your images, um, all your texture regions. Um, so it's going to store them all in this little uh, virtual texture atlas and if you ever need to use it you can get it through that and you'll be able to load them and store them inside of that. So you can just kind of spread it out so we can have like a menu texture atlas, we can have a game one, we can have an options one if there's an option screen, etc. Um, so we're going to create the menu one right now and do private um, we'll do buildable buildable bitmap texture atlas and we're going to do menu texture atlas and uh, we're going to need two pictures in here we are going to need the um, uh, we're going to need the play button and the exit button um, so as you can see I have the play button here and the exit button here so we're going to do public um, i texture uh, region and then we'll do play button region and the reason I'm making this public is because when you're loading up a sprite or you want to put an image, do you want to display the image, you have to have access to this actual region. Um, what the Atlas does is it just stores all these regions inside of it um, and loads them all up inside of this. Um, then we're going to do public eye texture region. Um, then we're going to do exit button region. <coughs> and all right, that should be good. Um, so then we're just pretty much going to load them all up. So we're going to scroll back down to where we uh, did the uh, asset base path, um, and we're going to do uh, we're going to pretty much instantiate our menu texture atlas equals new buildable uh, bitmap texture atlas, and then we're going to do the uh, we have to get the texture manager. So we have to get the um, texture manager pretty much manages all the textures. Pretty obvious. Um, get texture manager first one. You can press enter to load it. Then we're gonna have to set the dimensions of the uh, of the atlas. So pretty much how big your images are gonna be. Uh, One thousand twenty-four. It's not gonna be too much bigger than that. Um, but uh, we'll stick with that. And then we're gonna have to set the uh, texture options. So um, this is kind of confusing. It's really we're gonna set the bilinear. Uh, every single different texture option is how it's gonna be loading these images. How it's gonna display them. You don't have to worry about it right now. Bilinear is probably the. It makes it look the smoothest, even though it loads kind of slower than the others. So you can use default, for example. Oops, you can use default, but it's not going to load it, or it's not going to be as smooth as bilinear. So you want to stick with that, um, unless you really want to look up, to, look that up. It's really just going to be confusing if you don't know any OpenGL. Um, so I just recommend to stay away from that. Um, then we're actually going to load in the picture. So we're going to do play button region equals bitmap texture atlas texture region factory <laughs> long words here dot create from asset. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of different ways to load it. I'm just going to delete these here. Um, we're gonna. I don't feel like going through that. We're just gonna load it right in. Um, I know what you have to type in. So we're gonna do menu texture atlas. You have to give the atlas. You're gonna be storing this actual uh, uh, sprite in or region in. Um, and then after that, we're gonna have to give the activity. Um, and then after that, we're gonna have to give the name of the actual uh, image itself. So it's gonna be the play button dot png. Um, and then close it off, and you shouldn't get any errors. Um, then we're pretty much going to copy and paste this just for the ease of use. Uh, and then we're going to change the play to exit. And we're going to change play to exit again. All right, so that pretty much gets done loading all the menu resources. Um, then we should go back to the game activity. We have to go to on create resources, and we pretty much need to load them. Um, so we're going to do resource manager dot uh, get instance dot load 
game resources. I'm sorry, menu resources. Eventually we'll have to type this all in, obviously. Um, but for now, that's just going to be it. Um, so I think we're going to stop right there. It's been about 15 minutes right now. Um, so the next tutorial, we'll actually start displaying this on screen. Right now, nothing's actually going to show up. But we're going to start displaying this on on, uh, on screen in a second. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. Comment and subscribe. See ya.